Yeah, and I just use that dating as an, as an analogy, right? That's just an analogy of, you know, I'm um, kind of getting marketers to understand that you have to think about your your client avatar, your customer that you want to bring into your funnel that you want to close and you want to do business with. You've got to think of them like you would a spouse, right? You don't just go immediately get married. You don't see somebody at a bar and go, man, you're hot. Let's get married. No, they would never marry you. <laughs> And that's what most marketers do is they expect us, they expect their client avatars to just give them their contact information, get in their funnel, download their stuff before they've ever given them a reason to want to. So it's almost like you have to learn to date and to court. You've got to learn to get people to see who you are, give them value, serve, not sell, get them to, to trust you, to understand that you're a person of authority. For example, um, you know, people will go into my funnels because they've read my books or they've listened to my podcast or they've seen me on stage. The only reason that they give me their time to actually coach with me or to, um, you know, get into my funnel is because they see me as the authority figure because I've developed trust and respect from them. So my book, let's say, right, is a catalyst to them wanting to uh, and this book right here is, is launching. It's called The Ultimate Digital Marketing Playbook for Dominating Your Local um, your local Area. So how to take the guesswork out of digital marketing, maximize your profits, and become the authority in your profession or business. This is on Amazon. This totally talks, teaches exactly how, as a business owner, a local professional, how the process I'm telling you about, right? Most marketers just, they just say, download this, or give me your information, or join my challenge, or, you know, whatever it might be, right? Join my... 20, lose 20 pounds in 10 day challenge, but they're not going to give you that because the level of trust is not there yet. So once you bring people into your funnel and you continue to give value and you, you get, you position yourself as the expert authority, then when you go to create your landing pages and your funnels and getting people into your ecosystem, they're much more likely to convert because you've made a connection. Remember, marketing is attraction. That um, When you have good marketing, you're attracting your customer and saying, man, I want exactly what it is that you have because your marketing message was correct. So now the persuasion, the conversion, the sales, right, is much more easy because when your marketing message aligns with your um, your client avatar, then convincing them to convert to, to a sale, right? Persuading them to take action is much easier because your message aligns exactly with where they're at. So they really, really work hand in hand. The more that you, your, your messaging, your attraction, right? Speaks the language of the client. So you need to know what their pains are, their desires, their pleasures, their wants, their needs. Okay. As long as your messaging speaks to that and you are the solution to that, and they know that based upon, you know, your dating and how you've really warmed them up, they're much more likely to convert, to persuade, okay. sell. Right. So thank you for clarifying, you know, that you need to know their pain, pleasure, wants, and needs. Um, I actually want to focus on that. You know, you say that um, you, when you try to persuade someone, it's not that uh, you shouldn't focus on their, their needs, but you should like sell on to their wants. Their pains. Yeah. So people are much more likely to move to get away from pain than they are towards, towards pleasure. Right. So it's like, so let's talk, let's talk about it in the gym analogy. Right. So you're much more likely to convert. That's why the headlines are always negative. People want to know about, oh my God, negative, right? They're, they're more attracted to negative stuff. So the more that your headline speaks to solving the pain, taking them out of pain, right. And moving them towards pleasure, it's better. So it's something like, um, as a gym analogy, it would be, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be like, oh, let's, let's get you, get, get down to a size four, you know, right away. It's like, they, that's, that's a pleasure getting down to a size four. It's like how to lose, you know, 20, how to lose 20 pounds in 60 days without having to sacrifice your soul, give up all of your sweets and never drink alcohol again. Right? Like, Oh my God, I, yeah, I want to be able to lose weight and not have to, I can still drink alcohol. I can still, you know, eat sweets. I'm interested in that. Like, does it make sense? You're not saying, oh, how to lose 30 pounds. No, you're saying like, you know, are you completely obesely overweight? You're, you're, you know, you, you can't even barely get up in the morning. You're exhausted. You can't fit into your clothes. You walk five minutes and you can't even get out of bed. Like that stinks, right? Right. Now the solution to it is my new, my new gym product, my new gym challenge, whatever it is that you guys, you guys sell. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, you know, that was very helpful. I want to talk about, uh, you know, a bit more about you and like, you know, like, you know, you mentioned, you know, some of the success you've had, like before where you were and where you are right now. Um, I want to like know, like, you know, from your, like, 
your daily schedule, you know, how busy you are, um, you know, how productive you are, how you manage your time, is that important? And like, do you do everything on your own in terms of managing everything like your day to day? That's a good question. So today, I, on one of my coaching call, I actually did a, something called the Pomodoro Technique with my, um, with my students. So basically what that is, is in every morning I wake up at 5 a.m. and I work out from 5.30 to 6.30, right? Um, and either before the workout or after, I utilize something that it's called my daily sheet. And on my daily sheet, I write down, I visualize my day, what I want my day to look like for the day. I also visualize my outcome. So I know where I want to end up in the future, right? And I visualize myself as if I'm already there. And I visualize myself succeeding every morning, right? So it's a visualization. Five to 10 minutes is all you need to do. Then I write out six things that I'm grateful for. So six, and I know that for you men, some of you are like, oh, this sounds, you know, corny. But everything that I do is based upon scientific research proving that it, it, it works, right? So success breeds success. Energy goes where focus flows. So the more that I focus on gratitude when I'm grateful for, the more of those things that I get. The more that I visualize myself succeeding, I'm telling my mind, because it doesn't know the difference between reality and, and what I'm thinking about, my mind is putting me in a position to continue to succeed and to get to where I want to go. So those are two things that I do in the morning. I also, um, if I hadn't done it the night before, but I encourage it to be done the night before, write out six tasks that I absolutely must get done for that day. The first task being the one that I absolutely don't want to do. So for example, I teach my students to do a lot of video because video gets people to know them, like them, trust them, and position them as the authority figure, right? It's the fastest way for them to become known. Everyone hates doing video. Like if you ask a hundred people, you tell them to do video, they all say, I don't like the way I sound, the way I look, the way I, I'm, I'm fat, I'm skinny, I'm too tall, I hate my hair, you know, whatever it is. I don't like the way I sound. I, I'm embarrassed. No one likes it. But it's, but unfortunately, that's the way you look and sound and, and all that. So I just remind, that's how you look and sound. So you just got to get over it, right? But it's the fastest way to make the most amount of impact in any industry, no matter what it is, including being a gym owner, okay? So that's the first thing that you would do. And now once you get that thing, that first thing done, that hardest task, kind of like that book, Eat Your Frog, then all of a sudden you're, you've set yourself up, up for success. You instantly have more energy because that hard thing is done and you no longer have to think about it. Both physically, it's, it's out of your way and mentally, right? So then you can be more successful. So visualize your day, write out six things you're grateful for, and then write out six things that you're going to complete. Now, research shows that the more that you write something down, the more likely you are out to actually complete it. And then when you check that box that it was done, you also are giving yourself like little endorphins are, are, are created in the brain. So you're having more success. So your brain says, oh, I like this success. I want to do more. So then you're driven to continue to more, do more. So you'll have more energy to get more things done. So that's how my day um, starts. And then I go through my list. I, I really focus on doing something called the Pomodoro technique, which, which you don't know about. Look up the Pomodoro technique. You will save about 16 hours of, of, of in a week by utilizing the, the Pomodoro technique. And that's basically being majorly laser focused in 25 minute increments and then taking a five minute break every 25 minutes and then doing four of those. Four of those equals one Pomodoro. And if you do that, the goal is to do three Pomodoros a day, which would be 12, 25 minute increments of being fully literally focused on one thing, you will get an enormous amount of work done. You'll get more work done in a day than you've gotten done in a week. I guarantee it. Because we are way, as humans, because of the dinging and donging and peeking and ponging and Twitter and Twatter and Facebook and Instagram and all these phones and everything, we are constantly being, like our brains are being taken off of what we're working on. So it's taking us a long time to get back into the groove. So I really, really focus, preach, practice, and teach my students to use the Pomodoro effect as much as possible um, to get more done. As far as having a team, I do have help. I didn't always. Um, when I first started, you know, two and a half years ago, it was just me and one other person. And then we slowly, slowly grew to, to more. Um, but we, you know, we had three Two Comic Club Awards within the first year. So I was at, um, I launched in November. No, actually it was not, that's not true. It took me 15 months exactly to get three Two Comic Club Awards, which is mean I did a million dollars from a brand new business with the exact strategy that I'm talking to you about right now, which is basically putting out free content, getting people to know me, like me, and trust me. Now, this is on a national level too, which is much harder to do than a, than a local level, right? So this is the same strategy that I did in real estate where I, and I teach other local professionals now how to do, where we teach them how to become the lo local community market leader. So it's about developing trust, creating videos, making sure those videos are actually seen, right? So we teach you to commit to consistently producing content correctly, meaning correctly distributing it, correctly having the right message. You're going to make a connection, right? So you're more likely to convert 
more clients and customers, okay? If you think about that all the time and have that in your mind, you're more likely are gonna make a connection more quickly with your audience so they'll convert more easily. Um, and that's how I built my real estate practice to be in the top 1% of realtors nationwide, you know, for 19 years running. And that's the exact same way I got to become known in the digital marketing space um, to teach realtors and now local professionals how to use digital marketing and social media to dominate their, their that exact strategy. Okay, so before, uh, you know, your, your three awards, um, were you working on your, you said you were working with yourself and another person, were you, did you get your first award just by you and the other person together? Yeah, I don't remember if I had Megan on there yet. I, I, I don't, I think it was me and two other people. So like the, for the first year, pretty much, or like eight months, it was me and two other people, right? And then eventually we started adding and we kind of added too quickly, quite frankly, we grew too fast because we couldn't even handle the growth and even the employees <laughs> because it just was, we, we were, it just was too quick, you know? And mm -hmm. let me just say something like everyone always thinks like, Oh my God, it's just one funnel away. It's so easy. It's not as easy as just a funnel. You have to have the right ads and the right strategy behind the funnel. So you can have an amazing funnel, but if you don't have, if you can't bring content or drive traffic to the funnel, the funnel won't do anything to you. You can have great traffic, but if you have a bad funnel, the funnel won't convert. So really, really it takes both things right and the funnel will convert more once you know your target audience what their needs are like you really really understand every single aspect about them where they shop how old they are what they do what they eat are they married or single are they educated how or not you know who do they follow all of those things are so so important because in your marketing messaging right your messaging your attraction right will be better and then your conversion will be better because you're persuading them based upon what they need People are more likely to, to, con to convert when you're giving, you're really, really speaking to them and their marketing message. That's why knowing who your client avatar is and speaking that language to them all the time is so, so important. Okay. Well, how is like one way of actually figuring out like, you know, um, you know, all these things that you mentioned, like where they shop, where they eat, you know, what are they like, what they, how do you actually figure out, you know, these questions about your audience? So it takes time. So you can do, the, uh, like if you're going to, let's say you want to create a Facebook group, right? And then one of the things that you want to start asking people when they join is you want to, um, you want to ask them questions about like, first of all, what's, what's your biggest pain that you find about losing weight or what's your biggest pain you find about gaining weight if you're trying to, they're trying to gain weight. Right. Or so you can kind of understand like what the problems they're, they're going through. Like you want to always be asking those questions, taking surveys as you're building your list. You want to be asking all of those questions. If you have any kind of a Facebook group, make sure that you get their email address because you want to own the traffic. You want to own that list so you can market to them off those other platforms, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or wherever it is, you want to make sure that you're owning their, their email addresses. So in case those platforms ever go away, you're not just stuck at fish out of water. Right? So you do that by not saying, can I have your email address? No, you say, Hey, to get my 10 tips on how to lose three pounds in, you know, seven days without changing your lifestyle, input your email address and I'll get you this, uh, we'll send you the, the download, right? That somebody is going to want you give them something that they absolutely must have. So they'll give you their email address when they enter the Facebook group. So, and then you have that, that exported into your, you know, your CRM automatically. So you're not having to do any of it. That's done, you know, via spreadsheets and zaps and all that good stuff. And then they're tagged as a want to lose weight or want to gain weight based upon, you know, what their answers are, or if they picked A or B, like A is your want to lose weight. B is you want to gain weight. Now they're, now, you know, they're tagged as someone who wants to lose weight. B, are they tagged as a male or a female? You want to tag them on that too, right? C, are they trying to, um, you, know, you want to answer those questions so that you, your marketing message speaks directly to them so that you're having multiple me messages go out so that you can actually, you're more likely to convert. You're persuading because your messaging matches. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Thank you for actually like, you know, going uh, more in detail and explaining that process. So, um, you know, I can see that, you know, you're very successful um, in terms of like, you know, what you've achieved and, you know, um, you can very simply talk about very complicated things. Uh, I want to start and talk about, how, you know, how you got started with your journey. Okay. So which part of it? Like the, okay. So like, how did you get into entrepreneurship? And then we're going to slowly move on to like where you are right now. Okay. So I used to be a teacher. I taught third grade for six years. I've got a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. And my daughter, uh, at the time it was 19 years ago, she got, um, sick and contracted something called spinal meningitis 
And then she had a kidney failure and multiple strokes as an infant. And we spent like three weeks in Oakland Children's Hospital isolation unit with her. They told me, and this was, again, I was a teacher at the time. They told me that she probably wasn't going to make it on multiple occasions. And she ended up being amazing, but, but they had told me that she probably was going to, you know, it's very likely that she could be deaf or blind or um, mentally disabled because it have a lot of complications. So I quit my uh, full-time teaching job to be a stay-at-home mom. And I decided to play real estate, meaning I thought, okay, I'll sell one or two houses a year, three houses a year. I'll make the same amount of income that I made as a teacher so I could be home with my daughters. 